Welcome. We are the Ministry of the Real Truth, and we strive to bring you the real truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. No hype, no fluff, or other stupid garbage. We look at the three major organized religions Judaism, Christianity, or modern Christianity, and Islam. We listen to those people who profess to have the truth, the real truth, about those through the Holy Writ or their lectures, their debates, their sermons, etc. We listen to them, then we examine what they are saying, what they claim, that they have the established facts, the evidence which proves self evident, and so forth and we bring you the result whether they're actually on point or they're fraudulent or other so we are listening to a recent interview with well-known author etc James Tabor We present this to you, but also we have some shocking insight. We're not too sure if this is actually true, it's just something we came across. But as we do, we bring it to your attention because you may be baffled by this guy's brilliance or people like him, but you don't know what's gone on behind the scenes, what's gone on in their day to day life over the years, etc. So we're going to listen to this, the book of Genesis, a new translation from the Transparent English Bible by James D. Tubble, that's James Daniel Tubble. Have a listen to that, see what he has to say. Hey everyone, I've got four long interviews with David LeBlanc that I really like. You know, the wisdom on YouTube is that nobody will listen to anything more than eight minutes. And in the 100 plus videos I've uploaded to YouTube, I think I've disproven that theory. It really depends on what people's interest is. And I specialize in Christian origins, what we could call the Jesus movement, historical Jesus, Paul, the New Testament, early Christianity, ancient Judaism, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I know the thousands of subscribers that I have love long, in-depth videos. And so whenever I interview with David, we really dive in. And so what you're going to find here, what follows, is one of those programs in which we take a deep dive, and I really hope you enjoy it. So that's all about James D. Tabor from his own mouth, from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So we, as we do, look for further information on this James Tabor, and we found the basics. That he's born in Texas, 1946. He's a biblical scholar and professor at, of ancient Judaism and early Christianity in the Department of Religious Studies at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, where he has taught since 1989 and served as chair from 2004 to 14. He previously held positions at Ambassador College, 1968-70, while a student at Pepperdine University, the University of Notre Dame, 1979-85, and the College of William and Mary, 1985-89. Tabor is the founder and director of the Original Bible Project, a non-profit organisation aimed to produce a reordered new translation of the Bible in English. This is background is Again, he was born in Texas. Uh, he was the son of an Air Force officer. He was raised in the Churches of Christ. The Churches of Christ, most commonly known as the Church of Christ or Church of Christ, is a loose association of autonomous Christian congregation based on the Sola Scriptura doctrine and so forth. Their practices are based on biblical, biblical texts. And he attended Evelyn Christian University, etc. We earned a BA degree in Koine Greek 
also known as Hellenistic Greek, Common Attic, the Alexandrian dialect, Biblical Greek or New Testament Greek. This was the common supra regional form of Greek spoken and written during the Hellenistic period, and so forth. Okay, so he's got a BA degree in Corner Greek and the Bible. While earning his MA, he taught Greek and Hebrew part time at Ambassador College, founded by Herbert W. Armstrong, this is United Church of God guy, right? Pastor there, who had been accused of certain abuses, etc., like that, possibly before he died. Founder and president of the Worldwide Church of God, the Worldwide Church of God. Table earned his PhD, etc., etc. During the Branch Davidian siege in Waco in 1993, Tawar and fellow religion scholar J. Philip Arnold realised that in order to deal with David Koresh and have any chance for a peaceful resolution of the Waco situation, one would have to understand and make use of these biblical texts. After contacting the FBI, they sent Koresh an alternative interpretation of the Book of Revelation, which persuaded Koresh to leave the compound that was stormed by federal forces first. It's all about his major publications and so forth. And his other activities. Tabor has also appeared, appeared in all three seasons of the Naked Archaeologist. That's the Simcha Jovovich. Yeah, there we go. Jakubovici. Tabor's works are promoted by the educational charity United Israel World Union. He co hosts tours of the Holy Land, which are conducted by this organization. And he says many books and references. So that's a lot or a little about him. We did look online to see if we could find more information about him. I didn't really find much there on his books, etc. So, again, we found information on him here. But, we'll continue listening to him a bit longer. And I'm here tonight to discuss with Dr. Tabor his most recent release, which is the Book of Genesis, a new translation from the Transparent English Bible. Uh, I want to mention right off the bat that this, this translation has been put on sale uh, this month. It's been drastically reduced in price. I welcome you guys to go to Amazon or any of the other major booksellers that would carry it. Uh, I strongly urge you to pick this copy up. This is going to be an exciting conversation uh, about a, a, a groundbreaking translation. Just to introduce you guys, before I turn the floor over to Dr. Tabor, this is our third conversation together. Uh, one of the uh, the many uh, endorsements that was uh, written uh, uh, by his colleagues was one by uh, Dr. A.J. Drudge, Professor of Humanities at the University of Toronto. Some of you who are familiar with Dr. Table's blog will remember this from his blog recently. And he wrote, finally, a truly transparent translation. I have taught biblical texts for almost 25 years and have longed for a translation that didn't pull any punches when it came to the difficult passages that didn't try to spin the meaning of the text in the interests of later theology and doctrine, whether Jewish or Christian. Tabor's translation of Genesis renders the Hebrew not just with unparalleled accuracy and fidelity to the text, it also offers readers a sense of the unfamiliar elegance and strange power of the original. Beautifully conceived and executed, Tabor's translation is the result of a lifetime of critical learning and scholarly acumen. It is also a courageous undertaking. I have no doubt that it will quickly become the standard. That, that last line really struck me as I read that. And of course, Dr. Draj is famous for his translation of the Quran, a uh, very well esteemed uh, scholar, and a tremendous endorsement uh, there. So, um, so I'm, I'm thrilled and privileged to have you on again on my channel and, and discuss this. And I, I guess I, when you first told me about this, I was unaware of the depth and breadth of this project. But it does seem to be something that is uh, uh, quite an undertaking. And I guess I would ask to start off with this, is what, what, what got you on this? As, as many people would consider you to be a New Testament scholar, uh, you know, they would see you as you know, dealing with the historical Jesus or with concepts of Paul and New Testament theology. And here you are diving into a translation of Genesis. Um, and so uh, this might have been a surprise to some of your audience, but 
But how did you embark on this project? Good to be with you, Dave. Uh, yeah, we're switching gears here. Instead of uh, ancient Judaism and early Christianity and Jesus and Paul and all of that, we're doing Genesis. Um, I will say this, uh, and get to your question, the probably the most influential book in the Second Temple period, that is late you know, Jew Jewish and early Christian, you know the problems with calling it Christian, but you understand what I mean, the Jesus movement, which is I approach as a thoroughly Jewish movement within late Second Temple Judaism, as I know your, your various viewers uh, understand that very well, I think. But Genesis, Isaiah, Deuteronomy, those are the three main texts of the Hebrew Bible that shape and form so many concepts throughout the New Testament as well. So jumping to Genesis, that's not why I did it, but I just want to make that connection, is not a very strange move, because this is the text. Uh, I guess you could just uh, badly paraphrase something Paul said once in Acts. It's the text in which we live and move and have our being. It truly is. It's clearly the most influential text on the planet, I would say. Uh, maybe from a Christian standpoint, you might want to say the Gospel of John or Matthew or something like that, or Paul's letter to Romans. But because Genesis includes world religions as a whole, and Judaism and Islam and Christianity, I think you could make the case that it's the most influential book in on the planet, so to speak, with all of the Abrahamic connections and so forth. So it's basically James D. Tabor going on about his latest book, released the book of Genesis. If we find it, because we're looking for it to actually read it, we'll do a video on what it actually says and compare it with the original, ancient, very old Lishana Atika Supraya of the Tav Esher, or the Aramaic, from 800 BCE, copied by hand by scribes in Uhai, Edessa, now modern Turkey. We'll compare both of them to see what he has to say because he's probably translated from the Corner Greek, Hellenistic Greek, or at Common Attic Greek. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say and what those original ancient very old scriptures, manuscripts, actually say in comparison. So keep that in mind, we'll try to find that book and we'll try to do a video, we'll bring you a video, a part two, on that. Okay, the, the, the two different translations from uh, Victor N. Alexander, a native born Aramaic speaking translator from Betnarain or Mesopotamia in Syria, and James D. Tabor. But what we found quite by accident was this blog site, which states James Tabor, U N W C C and U I W U exposed. Maybe that's what he's involved with. Exposing U N W C Chair and U I W U President James Tabor by biological son. So this is his son bringing this information. He believed someone from UNCC should investigate the application resume of Professor and Chair James Daniel Tabor. James Tabor is not married to Laurie Woodall. The two actually divorced before James came to UNCC and he believes James Tabor lied about his marital status when applied to UNCC. Dan Tabor, that's supposed to be his biological son. Morris Molestation by his father, James Daniel Tabor, current chair of religious studies at University of North Carolina at Charlotte and president of United Israel World Union. Dan Tabor, July 10, 2011. Uh, in that period, he received an email from a woman he had previously met at James Tabor's 2008 United Israel World Union conference named Joanna Garrett. He described to Dan in brief, she is 
I am your father's latest affair, etc. I still have the email saved as proof, what the Dan guy does, right? The biological son. So he felt he needed to point out the fact Laurie Woodall divorced James Tibble approximately two years after they married and they never legally remarried again, as far as Dan knew. Yet they both keep kept up a marriage charade for James Tibble's career, including listing marriage on all of the online social networking pages. Dan knew of at least four extramarital affairs. Laurie Woodall, Jim's first when formerly married to his mother Linda Tabor. However, this isn't a blog about James Tabor's affairs, and in all actuality, who cares, right? During the late 1970s, Dan's family built their first family home in a suburb of South Bend, Indiana, called Grange, Indiana. The neighborhood was named Farmington Square. Maybe that's uh, James Tabor building their family, right? Inside that home, and albeit this is a repressed memory by Dan from at least 31 years prior or ago, and one that has taken him over a week at that time to muster the guts to tell this is what happened. So let's begin with last week's email, the, the email at the time that he received from Joanna Garrett, however her name is spelled. He believes her because he has personally seen his father commit adulterous affairs in the past so one more allegation doesn't shock Dan. He didn't plan on communicating with her or his father in the future, and if his father ever approaches him in the future, very, very bad things will happen to him. Hopefully he will stay home in Charlotte and life goes on peacefully for everyone. The email from Joanna, and again, Dan does believe she is telling the truth, angered him to a point he hasn't felt in a very long time since his father's affair with Laurie Noonan in San Antonio, Texas, in 2002. He believes, we believe this immense anger somehow psychologically sparked a repressive memory of childhood and one involving child molestation by Dan's father, James D. Tabor. It is only one memory, but quite a disturbing one. His father is a lifelong alcoholic and abused his mother often. He came home severely intoxicated most evenings and one time while he was watching television along in a da- alone in a downstairs family room, the room with the fireplace, he laid on top of me did all this abuse right. And he goes on about that. Uh, the thing that remember, Dan remembers the most is a sickening, sickening drunk breath, beer steeds breath, and so forth, right? Kissing him. So he's face down and he's doing all this stuff to him. Okay. Once this repressed memory came back, Dan actually walked away from home and family to at least contemplate committing suicide. Keep in mind, if this is actually if this actually physically happens to someone, anyone feels all kinds of emotions, while also bringing back every wretched memory. Dan could literally smell his father's breath and hear his voice all over again, as if it happened yesterday. All he wanted to do was die, but thankfully Tammy was around, and also thankfully a good friend on Facebook by the name of Jimmy Carter talked about of seeking revenge on Jim or retaliating for in the future. So he was persuaded by his friends not to take revenge on his father, biological father. Overall, he felt deeply humiliated and filthy even all those years later. Yeah. He had an extremely hard time sleeping since Joanna's email and when he received it the next night, he slept for the first time in a week. Uh, this must be his wife or his girlfriend at the time. Tammy and Dan currently relocated out of North Carolina and really request James, Laurie and all of James Tabor's cronies who have been emailing and slamming, us, or slamming them to just him and Tammy. Just leave them alone. You know, Please stop it and now their family to seek counselling, healing and carry on with their lives privately. As he's already mentioned, he planned to legally change his name in court and even move out of the state just to make sure he does not flip out and decide to seek revenge good man uh, he ends with a real soul and gut check for anyone associated with his biological father James Dean of Tabor do you take Torah and your faith seriously do you believe the Ten Commandments are relevant and adultery is in fact listed amongst them also for those of you who wish to believe those of you who believe James Tabor has approached head on, adulterized with or in any way followed, mess with you, abused you in the past, do not be silent. He used to believe and trust his father, but no longer. He is a very savage animal. James has gone through very childish and hideous measures of asking even his own mother 
Dan's mother, to write him an email of rebuke. It's to uh, Dan. His mother knows the truth. If anyone knows James to war, it's his mother. That should sink in. So, that's supposedly from James Tabor's biological son and what he, he's done to him over the years, 30 years ago. We're not sure if it's just someone putting this up that's fake, right? And sometimes you get that sort of thing. These people, like James Tabor, brush this aside. They don't want to talk about it. If you, if you were invited on a live stream, you says, hey, what about this? What do you say about this, James? Right? That'd probably just cut you off. Yeah. So, what do you think? Yeah. Is this guy to be taken seriously now? Because you've seen the evidence, supposedly, that he's dodgy. Yeah. Okay, it's nothing personal. It's not a personal attack. We just did not know that this guy was apparently had that history right we listened to a lot of his lectures we've even subscribed to him we're not going to like suddenly unscribe you know because of an accusation or whatever he might have some inter interesting information there that we could learn from okay but yeah his background if it's for real concerns us yeah we're not too sure if this guy's religious or he's an atheist there are websites online or comments online saying that he's an atheist and all this sort of stuff and he replies to that so we just wanted to make you aware like Toby Singer who has a sordid past he has a history in Indonesia where he supposedly uh, stayed with a friend in her apartment and then he was perving on her daughter at 2 a.m. in the morning. Okay, somebody, uh, the lady that put that up on uh, Luke Ford's blog, actually said, Thanks for putting it up there, making people aware of it. It's true, she was the lady that uh, he's, no, she was the lady that gave the information to uh, Luke Ford. I, I'm not too sure if he's a convert to Judaism or something like that, but it's up online on his blog. Yeah, so. You have to be aware of, you have to stay alert, you have to check out the history of these people. Any good journalist would go and look for the dirt on these people, or the history on these people, not so much, uh, I guess they look for the dirt. But we, the Ministry of the Truth, aren't looking for the dirt, it's just that we came across it, right? And so we think people should be aware. Uh, we've never met the guy, never talked with him, so we're just going by what we've found. Okay. And trying to make people aware, be wary of these kind of professionals that are teaching you their perspective, their opinion, or their views of what they've found when they've done the research on the Old Testament and the New Testament scriptures. Okay, so we hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe to. The Ministry of the Real Truth to see more exposures or well, more people like this exposed who are supposed to be the experts who are supposed to be teaching you telling you the truth etc etc uh, yeah, give us a like if you liked it uh, add your comments below we're always interested in those and you go share this video with your family, friends, neighbours etc that are probably subscribe to this channel or like this guy's lectures just so that they're aware okay, we are the ministry of the real truth and thank you for taking the time to look at this our latest video